Welcome, this is Zahn with Repro Products. Today's video is on what's new in Autodesk Revit 2018. Let's take a look at some of the Revit platform tools first. One of the newest features is now the ability for you to insert a Navisworks model, coordination model, inside the Revit environment. This helps for uh, coordination and collaboration with other types of 3D model files that are coming in to Navisworks, and then the Navisworks file can be brought into the Revit environment. If you are working with groups and links inside your Revit project, you can now schedule that data as well to get better information and insight into your objects. You now have the ability to adjust and tweak more global parameters for example, setting up better constraints, being able to set up whole dimensions, being able to flex and label the dimensions a little easier, and then also introducing the global parameters for radius and dimension. If you are working with 3D shapes such as 3DM files or SAT files, they now come into Revit and behave much better. You can actually use them uh, for host objects to place other types of families and things when you dimension it sees the edges of them not just the point references. In regards to basic documentation they have included some additional character font mapping capability and symbols so now it's a little easier for you to put some custom uh, symbols as part of your text. In regards to Revit structure design and detailing, they have introduced new connection detail types, so that way your library is a bit more extensive to work with. They've also set up steel connections for custom sections and be able to, for you to identify that section shape a little easier and it uh, complies to running code checks. You now as well have the ability to prioritize the connection of the elements for steel. They've also enhanced in the background the interoperability between Revit and Advanced Steel. So that way when you're creating your steel connections in Revit and you are round tripping them to Advanced Steel and back, it's a bit more of a seamless workflow. In regards to rebar, they have enhanced the software so that it can be placed at a little bit better in freeform objects and also respects the host if the host changes, as well as the rebar cover edging. They've also improved the variable rebar distribution feature so that it behaves a little bit better than prior. And obviously you can schedule that out if you need to, as well as annotate that information. And then in regards to rebar constraints, you can now modify them in 3D if you need to modify them. Sometimes it's a little easier to see and work with in a 3D uh, view than try to manipulate that constraint in a plan or elevation view. If you are working with SAT files or files coming in from InfraWorks, the rebar tool now understands and allows you to put rebar in those types of objects as well. And let's go ahead and jump into the Revit software to take a look at some of these new features. So here I am in Revit 2018 and I have a file open and one of the first new features is the ability for you to insert a Navisworks model. If you head over to the Insert tab of the Ribbon Link panel, you'll see Coordination Model. So once you click the Coordination Model command, you'll see this Coordination Model window open up, and it'll show you the any Navisworks Coordination Models you already have. You can, can select any one that you already have, and you can either reload it or reload from a different location or remove it as well as change its positioning, either origin to origin or shared coordinates. You can also just click Add to go find another Navisworks file to insert into this file. 
So for example, here it says ice stadium is not found. I can click reload from and go get it. And then at the same time, I can also do the gatehouse pub as well. And as you can see, the NASWorks files come in nicely and it's easy to see and easy to coordinate against in your Revit file. The next new feature in Revit 2018 is the ability for you to schedule links and groups. Here I have a Revit file open and you can see that we have a schedule for Revit links. You can also, if we scroll down and take a look at my schedules, we can see model groups as well. And you can see that we have it scheduled, we can call it anything that we want, and it will look at all the different groups and the type, the reference level, the origin level at offset, and the count as a default. If I click Edit under Fields, then I can see those schedule fields within the right uh, column. Obviously, just like any other schedule, you can filter or sort or format or change the appearance. The next feature that is a new feature in Revit 2018 it has to do with global parameters. If I take a look here at this elevation, I have this global parameter set up for window one, and they apply to both of these windows here. If we head over to the Manage tab of the ribbon, Settings panel, and go to Global Parameters, we can take a look at the global parameter window, and it will list all of the, one, all of the global parameters that are already created. Here you can see the different sizes and materials and finishes and so on. For example, here we see the window one that we specified. If we change this to say 10 feet six and we hit apply and okay, then the windows will physically adjust and move as well. If we head over to global parameters, we can also, since we have parameters now for materials and other objects, we can click inside here and change it to a different material. If I change it to, say, brown glass, and click OK and apply and OK, all of my glazing that I have physically assigned to that global parameter now changes to a brown color. Let's switch to another file for additional global parameter features. Here we have another file that works with global parameters, and you can see we have a couple dimensions for the radius. And if I select it, you can see that it actually has a dimension now, and it is a global parameter for the radius for the planters. If I head back to the global parameters window, you can see we have the R planters here. So if I adjust this to say 115 and hit OK, then it will adjust accordingly. If we look at the sketch for this paving, for example, as well, there is also a radius uh, dimension that is a global parameter for the uh, diameter of the uh, patio, or the deck patio, actually. And I can go back to the global parameters, and I can see that value here. And again, if we make adjustments, say 45 feet, and click Apply and OK, you'll see it'll make that adjustment as well. The next new feature in Revit 2018 is if you are working with um, the specific 3D model type files such as 3DM or SAT files. When they come in, you can see that they behave a little bit easier now. So if I, for example, want to place a family, it will behave because I have place on face. It will see the face of that family and you can see it adjust accordingly. It's following the curvature of that canopy roof, as you can see here. Also, if you want to say dimension, you can see that it's, it now reacts and behaves and understands the face of the objects as well, and not just the insertion point. Another feature in regards to the 3D shapes is when you're creating a family and you go to insert that particular type of object, and in this case, it will be a SAT file for an air handling unit. We can select it and bring it into the environment, and it displays accordingly. 
what is new about Revit 2018 is that we can actually put in the connectors to that object and it sees the face of the objects a little easier. So for example, if I click um, duct connector, I can see that it wants to touch that face. See? And I can also use tab if I need to, to tab into that face and also place that information as well. The next new feature in Revit 2018 has to do with text. And as you can see here, we can go into that command and we can right click and start to introduce symbols such as, for example, almost equal, angles, center lines, degrees, and even diameter. In addition to this capability, if I use the command to place a piece of text, I can right click, go to symbols, and click other. This will bring up the character map window, and I can place any type of character map that I want to. For example, here, I can use any specific type of font and look at different types of symbols to work with. So I'll select a few and I'll copy them to the clipboard and then I'll right click and paste. What you'll notice as well is that each specific character mapping has to have its own type of text. So if I go ahead and create a new one and we'll call it symbols, then we can actually force it to use that specific font and that specific character mapping. And so it makes it a little easier if you need to start putting in symbols uh, to work with the character mapping. Another new feature in Revit 2018 has to do with structural connections and the prioritization of those steel connections. For example, if I select the steel connection and give it a second, it will look at that particular connection and it will give us the ability to control the prioritization of uh, which is first, second, or third in this situation because we have three possible um, connections. And you can see in blue, there's a two, there's a three, <clears throat> there's a four, and there's a one up here. So I can left click and hold two and move it over to three, and it will change its position from two and to three here. So for those who are structure engineers, you may need to use this feature to make adjustments. Another new feature in Revit 2018 has to do with rebar. And if we select and look at this particular type of object here, we can see it's an adaptive component bridge deck, um, and it's got several point placements. If I change my visual style to uh, wireframe, you can see the rebar. If I select the rebar, uh, I can see that that rebar has the shape and it's conforming to the shape of that particular host object. If I head over here to another one, I can see that I have variable rebar set turned on. And what that allows me to do is that it conforms to the shape of the host object a little bit better. Whereas if you click it and turn it off, it breaks that functionality. And lastly, if you are working with uh, InfraWorks models or other types of 3D geometry files and they bring them into Revit, the rebar command understands these objects and allows you to place them in. For example, here we have an object that's a SAT file and down here we have an object that's also a SAT file that have been brought in. If I head over to the 3D rebar view, we can see that we can actually put rebar into those objects as well. And depending on the nature of the shape of the host object and how much rebar detailing you need to do, um, you can get very complex in building the rebar. And so that's just a sh short video on some of the new features in Revit 2018. Thank you very much for watching.